Morning and welcome to the first episode of Gold Tea Caddy. Uh, we're here at the Grange Park Golf Club in St Helens and today I am caddying for someone pretty special. Warrington Wolves, Super League legend Lee Brears is joining us uh, and he'll just be taking us around the course. How are you doing, pal? All right. Good to see you. Yeah, um, yeah. Cheers for doing this for us, mate. If you'd said to me six months ago when I started Gold Tea that I'll be uh, caddying for Lee Brears, like it's uh, it's a bit of a big thing for us. So yeah, nice one for uh, for sorting this early, mate. Oh no, thanks for the invite. Thanks for the gear as well. It's, you know, it's top class. Nice. But man. even better, thanks for caddying. You can do it every day if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, we'll we'll, uh, we'll get teed off. Yep. Cheers. Thing. Not a bad one to start the day. Yeah, so how long have you golf really? I started probably about two, about twenty-three years ago now. Just playing at the club once a week with some of the boys and then gradually it got uh I got more keener, if you like, and I think really took it up seriously when I joined this club, Grange Park, in, in 2009, uh, and then 2013 retired from rugby, and then this kind of took over my life because uh, it gave me something to focus on. You know, af after rugby, you know, I obviously played rugby all my life, but not having to play that, I think I needed something else to focus on. So since 2013, it's, it's basically been, you know work family golf yeah, that's yeah. that's basically what it is it's a it's a great game and it's a great challenge keep I, it fit I wouldn't say like we've, we've obviously you're retiring from rugby and you're playing it all your life does, does golf sort of give you that competitive sort of thing that we're missing really for yourself yeah a million percent and you know what it's really covid uh especially last year really i found something out was i've always thought wondered why i, I didn't struggle after rugby about you know depression and, and missing rugby and I've never once missed rugby league but last year when Covid hit and we couldn't play golf it then struck me and it was it, it struck a chord that actually golf saved me from you know being depressed being yeah. you know missing rugby league because I just you know give everything I had to golf and every day you know you come to the course it's it's a different challenge yeah, yeah. so I just I just love that challenge and I love playing match play against you know other other people and and trying to get one over on them so yeah it's it it's really helped me you know post retirement you know yeah yeah so obviously we've uh with your retirement there's a neck injury that, that sort of ended it for you but it that you're going to be your last season anyway at one in, or no yeah i was gonna gonna go one more year and then and then retire and go into coaching so you know really when on the grand scheme of things i was only missing six months so right it's uh it's disappointing at the time, but no, life goes on. How far off are we, Lee? Uh, one, I'll have a... I'll get it in. 86. Yeah, but you're going wet. It's probably, it's a, it's a touch of wind. I'll, I'll go 54 degree wedge. Because yeah. I could probably hit it behind the pin here, if I'm lucky. Should be good. Yeah, so it's left me an uphill putt, so it's not a bad start. That. Like when you're playing, uh, obviously you won't write as much because of your eight your to fame from your on a weekend, I suppose, but I've been able to get out of this just now. <laughs> I, obviously, these viewers don't know how much I didn't tackle her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so, I, you know, I, even when I played, I still wanted to get out because it, at the end of the day, I used to use it as a recovery session as well. You're walking, you know, you could walk anything up to six miles, so get your body moving again. Yeah. Uh, also, what it, I, I say to a, a lot of rugby players, just because you play rugby doesn't mean that you can't do any other, other kind of thing. So if you get out and play golf, you know, tennis, whatever that may be, as long as it's not as physical 
and puts you in danger of injury. But it, it helps you to focus on something else. Yeah, yeah. It certainly helped me because there's n you got a lot of time in, in rugby league, any sport really, when you're a professional sportsman, you've got a lot of downtime. Yeah. So it's important that it's you use that regularly because a lot of people go home and, you know, bet and stuff like that and just out I'll play it, play on the Xbox. Doesn't look very big. No. Right, Lee. Come for the birdie. Uh, talk to me a bit about your, your footage technique. Uh, what goes through your head when you reach that spot? And yeah, how, how do you do it? It's one of the toughest parts of the game, I suppose. Yeah, it's probably one of my weakest parts as well. Uh, I'm, I'm quite a feelsy player with my hands, so. Right. You've got to get the, the speed of the green right, but I'm just trying to focus on getting it, you know, past the hole. If it's not up, it's not in me. Yeah, yeah. One of my mates always says he's awesome. So, yeah, just getting it past the hole. And if you're lucky enough to get a birdie, you get a birdie. But we'll see how it goes. Nice one. They should move quite a bit, this, from left to right. So, I'd like to use the claw grip. Just run out of pace. But we'll take that for a path to start off with. So it's a nice easy start. Pity I can't do that on a comp day. <laughs> Where did you start as, a, as an amateur? What, 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 what's your background there? I started, I was four years of age, I'm, li I'm literally a free kick. Probably about, probably about 500 metres that way. It was the old Saints ground. Stopped yeah, yeah. Road. Road, yeah. Stopped at Kilwa. And so St. Helens Crusaders was a local junior centre I played for. But when I was four in 1982, they, they set up a team. Uh, but obviously it was under nines. And where we were from on the, on the council estate over the back row. I used to we used to live in the cul de sac. My mum and dad in the cul de sac. I should say dad does now. Uh, there was a there was a, a lot of kids there, you know, for camp after seven, eight years eight years of age. And I used to knock about with them for the four years. I probably just followed them about to be fair, messing about. And so they all joined this rugby club. I was too young to play, so I used to go with them on the night training and messing about. Uh, remember when we went our first game with the Interstate Williams in Wigan? And obviously I just went to Just because we made to that, I couldn't play over the four. But, um, I remember that. I actually, I actually went on. We were running out of players, so Danny, the, the coach, put me on. Uh, we got beat 94 nil that game. <laughs> uh, but I think I played about a minute or something like that. And that was, you know, living over the road from Nosy Road, probably always in my club that I was going to play some sort of level of rugby league and, 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 and started at four and, and played for Crusades all the way up. I actually played for the under nines. I played when I was four and I played under nines when I was five and I played under nines when I was six, under nines when I was seven. On the nines when I was eight, and when I was actually old enough to play on the nines, I played on the tens. So I didn't actually <laughs> play on the nines from my age, uh, and and stayed there then until when I when I signed for Saints at sixteen. What was that like? How did you get get found by Saints? Who, who, who spotted you first? And... Yeah. So again, uh, it, it was it was kind of strange that's because of that that time there was a lot of players getting signed by professional clubs. 14, 15 and that. I wasn't quite developed enough to get noticed really. I was, I was quite quite slight in stature and in weight and 
then I had a growth spurt. Uh, for what I am now, six foot four. <laughs> and uh, we were playing a game. Actually, it knows what it was Saints Town team against Wigan Town team. Uh, and Kevin Crane, I got one of the mats that, that game. And Kevin Crane spotted me and said, this. After the said, listen, we want to want to meet with you and your parents and we want to sign you. Well, I just, you know, saying to my own town club that I, 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 I love St. Thomas of the League and to say that I'm going to sign for him was really special. I wouldn't sign for nothing, well, I did to be fair. He gave me uh, two season tickets and a, a tracksuit. Is that it, yeah? Yeah. Wow. But, hey, I would have signed for nothing. It was fantastic when that one started. I'm having a bit of a look here. This is not what I can do. That should be right. Obviously, signed for Saints. You played. You, didn't, you played one season at Saints? Oh, well, I played about eight games yeah. in 97. Bobby Goldie got suspended, so they put me in. Uh, and that was the start of the career. Really. Big boots to fill then. Massive. Bobby's a legend. Uh, really looked up to Bobby. He's one of the heroes. And, and also, you know, he's so down to work, Bobby. I was in full time at the club, but you know, when, when Bobby had his... Bobby had any spare time, he would get me in and we'd do kicking, goal kicking, field kicking. He was just fantastic for me. Remember the day when he got sent off because he smashed Neil Cowie? Around the head for Wigan in the Challenge Cup, first round, and I'm on the terrace as, as an academy player, as a fan, yeah. screaming, you know, can we get up? And he couldn't get up because Bobby smashed him like but Bobby got sent off, and I'm not real, I didn't realise then, and I wouldn't have done that. That incident changed my life forever. Yeah. Because while Bobby got suspended, I got the chance, and then, you know, Robinson come in third down line, and I've been there ever since, so. You know, he was always looking after me, Bob, and in that instant, by and getting sent off, he looked like a bit then, yeah. Right, we're at the green. Uh, just at back here, Lee, so... What are you going to go with, putter, or...? Yeah, putter, it's just... It's on a bit of fringe, but... It's an uphill put again, so... The pace should be... No worry, it's about that line again, so... We'll see. <laughs> Give me that little, give me that like three footer. What? This is the buzzer. Get out of goal. This is the, uh, the three footer. To... Especially when you're playing max play. Yeah. Is this sort of that sort of late kick in a game or yeah. something like that? Yeah. This is like the the uh, and the, the goal kick from. Probably about 15 metres from the post where yeah, you, yeah, where you, you should, should get, it. get it. But you might not, but you might not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've got to really focus on your technique. Now, knowing this, it, obviously, it's right late. But if I've got it, it's some place which stays on that. But when you play a match play, and this could be for the match, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you now, I get more nervous over this than I've ever, ever done playing with Bruno. That's the thing, it's, uh, it's a strange sport, because like I say, you have had thousands of fans when you're doing kicks and stuff like that, but... Yeah, and also, you know, if I make a mistake in rugby, if I miss a tackle, which I miss plenty, yeah, yeah. I've always got somebody that's adding to my yeah, If I miss this, it's just on you. It's my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that too Driver. Happy days on driver. <laughs> the best feeling you know, to, to win the challenge, but. Obviously, win the lunch, Todd as well as 
uh, was, was special, you know. Kind of blue cloth down relegated, we didn't work getting paid. We went to the walk. I absolutely loved every minute of it. That was a good solo. It was awesome.